So you want to learn how to gen, right? You're here because you want to work out how to play complicated, progressive, modern metal riffs. Otherwise, I don't know how you ended up here on a crazy YouTube and chill sesh, but you know, we're here now, so let's have a look. So one day you're just sat there listening to a bit of Meshuggah or Periphery or Monuments or whatever, and you're like, you know what would be a great idea is if I try to work out how to play like that, because I hear it, I feel it, I want to do it. Hang on a minute, this is really tricky. How do you do this? How does this work? I don't know. That's basically what I've been through for the last 16 years. The question is, how does one gent? How do you do that on this? Because it sounds awesome, it feels awesome when you play it, but making that leap from I want to play that music to I am now playing that music is, let's be honest, it's a bit of a leap, right? It's not impossible, it is tricky, and I'm here to talk you through some processes that I've developed on how to get there easier and more efficiently. I'm Mike Mallion. I play drums in the band Monuments. We play genty progressive stuff. I've got an entire website dedicated to teaching all of this kind of stuff, and I want to tell you a bit about that later. But for now, let's look at this. Here's the three things that you need to be aware of to move forward in this. Basic theoretical terms, not going to bore you too much. Here's what a 4-4 bar looks like. This is what it looks like when you split it into eighth notes and then 16th notes. This is what 16th notes sound like with a quarter note pulse. It's not rocket science. That's just dividing a bar into 16 pieces. Now we're looking at this from this because this is where we groove. That's where we like to hang out. That's where the audience likes to hang out. That's the end goal, but it's not how we make the crazy riffs work. That's how most of Western music works, but we're going into something a bit different here called polymeters. What this is going to be is showing off basically small phrases that happen in their own time that basically don't fit into 4-4. This is what it sounds like when you play a 3 16th note phrase. So it's not crazy, it's just three sixteenth notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. What's interesting is that when we take that four, four bar and we try to put three over the top of it, this is what that sounds like. That's the sound of three bars it takes for that 316 to slowly displace its way out of the bar and make its way back to one so that we loop nice and easily. Now I'd love to say that that's everything, but we really are just getting started. The next thing to think about is how long does this riff take before it loops? Now the reality is that most of this kind of music, actually it lives within the structural realm of the 4-4. Four -four. The 316 thing, that's just happening within the construction of the riff, but the song will be looking at bars that are based in that 4-4 world, right? So, a verse could be eight bars long, and it will consist of four two-bar versions of this riff. But when you play this as a two-bar loop, you're going to lose the last bar. This is what that sounds like. So that's level one. We're going to now look at level two. This is something that I like to call a compound polymeter. By that, what I mean is that we're putting a polymeter inside a polymeter so that you can gen while you gen. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take that three idea and let's go ahead and do it twice and then do a four note version. So we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And when we put that over four, it's going to sound like this. Let me show you what this sounds like when it's played on the kit. So 
So that's level two. Let's take it up a notch. Let's take three, three, four as one phrase. Let's do it twice, three, three, four, three, three, four. And then we switch it up on the third repeat of that little phrase. It'll go three and four. So we'll have one to three, one to three, one to three, four, one to three, one to three, one to three, four, one to three, one to three, four, one to three, one to three, one to three, four, one to three, one to three, one to three, four, one to three, one to three, four. Now, this is where you tend to get lost if you're just counting in a linear, non-musical based pattern. Whenever we do that three, four, you're going to hear some different notes going on. It's going to help you to kind of catch where you are. The only issue with a construction like this is that it's now so indivisible by four that it just flies off the end, like it just goes forever. So what we need to do is pick an ending point, basically, in order to make this work in a song. But for now, I'm going to show you what this sounds like going all the way around the system, because you could pick a start and end point that you like that aren't necessarily the technical start and end points. In a nutshell, that's kind of how this gent -E polymetric drum stuff actually works. That's all that's going on under the hood. If it sounds more complicated than that, it's probably just because the start point is a bit trickier, or the notes are changing in a different system to the rhythm. Once you understand and deeply can integrate those levels of riff making and counting, you're going to find that all of these riffs start to merge into the same skill set. Learning one song takes you to the next song, Fills that you learn in one song can be broken down into small pieces that can then be ejected mid-riff. The issue that I found, and I think the reason it took me this long to gain this kind of confidence, is because the difficulty curve is high in the sense that the music that I wanted to learn has so many of these stacked systems on top of each other that each one takes so much mental effort to break down that by the time you've done one of those, you've only just gained then one two sets of exercises and then in order to put a song together you've got to break that down from the top. My solution for that with Malian Drum Academy is to help you to build these skills up from the bottom upwards. So starting at very basic displacements of fives, sevens, nines and elevens and then building these into a whole host of different kinds of compound polymeters. I'm talking loads of exercises here, over a hundred in total. The goal in completing that course is to then be able to use that polymetric understanding to be able to count along and find your way through these kinds of riffs whenever they come up, to learn songs faster and have more fun while you're playing them. All of these exercises have a really cool interactive tab player alongside it, as well as a user selectable camera angle, the ability to invert the camera and the ability to slow down, speed up or loop any section that you want freely without having to click back. Right now you can get a seven day free trial of all of my courses, including this Developing Polymetric Confidence and the Monuments Lavos and Cardinal Red courses, as well as access to all future courses that become available. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope this has been helpful to you and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.